Today we're going to start on some tree colors, mixing greens within tree shapes in order to see the different combinations of pigments. They're intermixing wet on wet, how they intermingle within the larger tree form, and to use this as a vehicle for uh, small studies that uh, the students can do at home at various sizes and scales and different tree shapes. The main idea is to experiment with the different types of blues, yellows, greens, reds, sepia colors, and how they can combine in ways that create some new, exciting, and interesting intermixing of green colors. So I'm going to be demonstrating with specific color combinations, uh, creating the shapes as I paint, talking about the flow of the water and the color and the dilution and other factors that need to be considered as you're painting uh, trees. Uh, this study process is something that can happen uh, at your own time. You can do one, two, uh, three of these studies, do a sheet at different sizes. Uh, in this first instance, I'm going to start with a uh, Aurelian yellow as the base color and create the shape of the tree with the Aurelian yellow. I'm painting with a round brush, a sizable Robert Simmons 12. Uh, which is going to dictate the scale of the painting you're working with. Depending on your preferences for brushes, uh, the scale of the vegetation and tree can be whatever is comfortable for you at home. You'll notice that there's some variation as i working on an easel and the tilt uh, in the way that I'm actually applying the color. There's different degrees of saturation in various places, creating the crown of the tree and then the shape of the branches down to the trunk. Uh, and then you can elaborate and put it in a setting or a landscape if you choose to do something like that uh, to get an idea of uh, some position or base for the tree itself. The Aurelian Yellow, uh, which is uh, comparable to Windsor Lemon and Windsor Yellow and some other bright yellows, is considered a cool yellow. Um, and the color, that, the secondary color that you mix with this, uh, where you're mixing wet on wet right on the paper, uh, is a function of the of toning down that brilliance of color. You'll notice in the field of yellow there's some uh, highlights and some openings left in the tree uh, and that is uh, for the intent of uh, showing daylight coming through. Uh, to show a fairly strong green I'm going to be mixing a blue. Uh, in this case it'll be a Prussian blue and because Prussian blue is a uh, fairly vibrant uh, color the high chroma content of a Prussian blue uh, is going to mix and blend in varying degrees depending on the wetness of the mix and the drying effects of the yellow which has already been absorbed into the paper. Uh, this characteristic of watercolor of the absorption factor of the paper together with the wetness of the wash itself is going to determine the type of intermingling that will occur in mixing the two different colors together to create a new green. Um, I'm not covering every little spot, I'm leaving some areas where the yellow can shine through or controlling the dilution. In areas where it comes down to the base and I want to get a suggestion of a darker lower portion of the crown of the tree, I'm adding in more chroma and a much stronger direct application of the Prussian blue into the bottom parts of the tree. And you can see how the moisture dripping down, working on an easel like this, dripping down brings us right down into the, the form of the trunk and then down to the ground itself. I'm working on a cold press paper <clears throat> and the cold press paper is a uh, is a somewhat more um, uh, textured and um, it, depending on the brand of the cold pressed paper will also affect the uh, degree of absorption. Uh, some papers have more of a uh, surface articulation than others and the, uh, the drying factor of the cold pressed paper will determine the quality and intermingling and the variegation of tone that you'll be able to achieve. Now this is just using, the whole idea of, this, of these exercises is just to use two different colors, a yellow and a blue, and combine them together in order to get the, uh, uh, the sense of the different types of greens, even within the field of color of just those two 
pigments and how in their different degrees of dilution and different degrees of overlap uh, the effects uh, can give you quite a wide, wide range of hue. Yeah, I'm just sort of drifting out the rest of it in the base. I'm going to leave this little wet drainage area, if you will, which will then bleed back. And also there's a, an overlap uh, in the way in which the color actually drained down into the trunk where some of the yellow is actually still leading through. Now I can also go back with adding yellow into the crown of the tree. And what happens is that in applying color back into a field that is, be, it is beginning to be absorbed, wet always goes into dry. So anything that has been put on the paper before and it's been absorbed to some degree, a new color wash that is intended to pick up some highlights or add in some yellow uh, will in fact give you this blossoming effect and this intermingling quality that is somewhat difficult to control but it also leads to some exciting results. So this is a good part of the experiment as well. Uh, being very careful to see how much moisture is on the brush, where that moisture is being applied to another field that's partially drying and then also uh, going back and forth between the two colors in order to create whatever degree of dimensionality you want to the form. And that's it uh, as far as this shape is concerned. If I increase the chroma uh, for creating certain effects, in this case I'm suggesting light coming from the left, the amount of pigment will be adjusted accordingly as well as the intermingling effects of the yellow and the blue. So you can see the richness that's happening in here and that has to do with dilution control, it has to do with the amount of pigment on the surface of the paper and the buildup wet on wet uh, in various parts of the tree form in order to create this shape. Uh, depending on whether you're painting in the field or whether you're painting in the studio and depending on what kind of realism you're hoping to achieve, uh, this uh, exercise will, view, will go a long ways towards uh, achieving uh, certain dynamic qualities to your tree studies uh, and then improve your tree painting uh, in your final work. And as Robert Wade from Australia mentioned, uh, when you get into a bead that it runs the risk of dripping down your entire drawing, you can either change the tilt of your easel and lift up that extra bead with a thirsty brush, a brush that's been dried off. Very important to have a pad of towels, washcloths, uh, sponges, whatever it is in order to control the amount of moisture on your brush. Uh, very critical for um, being able to get the desired amount of pigment onto the surface of the paper. And that's it, just using uh, an Aurelian or Windsor yellow and a Prussian blue.